and welcome to the Vintage Unicorn Beauty Makeup and Etc. Tonight we are doing not a makeup tutorial, we are going to be touring my makeup station as well as talking about my first bra fitting at the age of 20 something. So let's begin. I was having some issues with my back and everyone that I talked to and even my doctor said you need to go look at a bra and let's backtrack, okay? I graduated at 15, uh, 2005. Add that up, that's how old I am. Um, so I graduated really early because I skipped second grade, so I was always a year younger than everyone else, and then I, fi I finished early. I didn't go to 11th or 12th grade, just graduated and continued right on to university. That didn't work out so well. So I was always younger than everyone, and this started in like sixth grade, where the girls in the locker room were like, oh my gosh, you don't even have like anything. And I didn't. And my mom also always said, we have hereditary small breasts that I have nothing there, is what I thought I was hearing. And that's gonna be a running theme in this part of it. It's the eating disorder. That even when it's not physically representing itself in either binging, purging, or starvation, or uh, excessive exercise, laxative abuse, whatever it is, it's still there, governing my thoughts, governing my mind, all of that. So. It took a lot for me to willingly go into a Victoria's Secret. In fact, I looked around at some other places, like some intimates places in Albuquerque Uptown, and they were like for older women. And basically, while we were on our way out of town, I kept saying, well, I do need to. No, I don't want to. I do need to. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to. We have to go. So we went into Victoria's Secret. And my husband actually like is the one who encouraged me to go in to Victoria's Secret, which has like eight rooms that I got lost in while he stood around and played Pokemon trying not to look like Jim Gaffigan. Anyway, so my first bra fitting experience, I was walking around just kind of looking at bras and I didn't want a sales associate to talk to me. I just didn't. So I, d I was like, they're gonna just make me feel bad about myself. That's just what's gonna happen. And a couple come up to me and finally I'm like trying to figure out how one of these bras that like buttons up the neck works. It looked like a bralette, like what I've been wearing, essentially sports bras that are kind of pretty for the past forever. And this lady says, well, what bras, what are you wearing? And I said, I'm wearing a free people bralette. And she said, what cup size do you think you are? And I said, I'm an A. And she said, I don't think so, uh, come with me. And she like shows me all these bras. She says, I think you're more like a C. And she's showing me things that I'm like, no, those will fit on my head. You don't get it, I have a flat chest. And so I walk away from her, I'm like, fuck this bitch. And sorry, that was my thinking process. And so I start looking at these bras and I'm looking for one. I'm like, babe, can you please help me? I'm trying to find this in an A. And he's like, there isn't one there, babe. And he actually understood like the sorting system better than I did. I just thought you pull a drawer and it's like all the bees or whatever, I don't know, anyway. But he realized they were like sectioned, anyway. So I decided to take a C cup bra into the Victoria's Secret dressing and measurement room, also known as the, you know, pit of hell. It is, it's the pit of hell for me in my head at this time. Next door to me in the dressing room, I hear a girl who is getting ready for her first day of seventh grade and she's getting measured for her bra and I'm like, oh my God, how old would that make her? Like 13, 14? So I've, I'm what, 15 years late? Anyway, um, so I try the bra on. All I do is I lifted up my bralette with my undershirt and I just put it on and like buttoned it. And I was like, Jesus, this fits. Like it fit flush against my skin. The C cup that she was recommending. This exact bra here. This is a 34C and it is beautiful. I actually got two of them. I am super sunburned, I'm sorry, but I wouldn't, I would never have thought that that would, I'm not putting any pressure either. Flush against the skin, anyway. It was an adventure. So I wanted to bring out this bag, which I dug out from my underwear drawer of the bras I was wearing previously. Just to tell you, you probably should get fitted if you haven't, because I, I, maybe I'm the only adult woman who's never like had a real bra, but maybe I'm not. So this, this is one of my favorites. It's nice and loose and flouncy, and this is a free people bralette. It is a small, I like that, I can understand that. Small, medium, large, extra large, whatever, I can understand that. And this is where the booby goes. That's what my boob had, and 
it just, everything was flat. Everything was just kind of dreary. So I have that one and I have about a million different versions of that one. This one I think is a little bit more of a fancy to do of that one. I didn't bring out any of the uh, like strappy crazy ones with the crazy backs and all that. They're all essentially the same thing. They're just fabric. So I have another free people one here. This one is purple. This exact one you will see recurring a lot. That one's the purple one. I think that's an extra small actually. Uh, it give, I thought it was giving me better support. Um, this is the orange version of that in the small. This is like some fun print of that. Again, same, another one of my wonderful free people bralettes that served me so well. And a couple more in here. Uh, this is actually a, another free people bralette, which is kind of like the other ones I have where there's like some kind of mesh or something like that. And I have about 20 of these, plus all of these. And I figured this was the only thing I was ever gonna wear for the rest of my life. Thank God that I stepped into the pits of hell. Thank you so much for listening to my little bra rant. Now let's get on with my makeup studio. So I would like to emphasize that I do have a full beauty room. There isn't much in it. There is a cat and those are our old moving boxes. That is my background, but this is where all of the interesting stuff is. Let's start with brushes. You have to have good brushes if you're going to play with makeup as much as I do. So what I do is I buy a lot of Morphe brushes. The reason I buy a lot of Morphe brushes is it allows me to have something of a professional setup where I can have multiples of the same one. This is the, you know, 506, which I use all the time. This is an E36. This is one of my favorite dome brushes. This is the MB23. I love these. I have this one, which is also really nice, probably a better quality than the MB23. And it is the, is that an EZ or an E23? E23. And basically I just have a bunch of them. I have this one, this is the 321, my applicator brush. I have a ton of these, as you can see. As far as fancy brushes, I do have my scone brushes. I have a few real technique brushes. Um, all of these ones with the gold handle, I actually got on Amazon. They're like an MSQ. That's when I say I don't really know what the brand is, but they're also quite reliable and nice. And I have the odd Ipsy brush that I was sent. Over here I have a Luxie brush for my face. I use that for blush and stuff. This is my Morphe highlighter brush, the Y14. Why do I keep picking them up upside down? I have a couple of these fair brushes, which I don't even remember where I got. This is my e.l.f. brush that I use for contour. I just love it. I am eventually going to pick up the Kat Von D version, another Real Techniques brush. I have this Real Techniques brush, which I actually hate. I just don't want to throw it away. And then I have a ton of little eyeliner brushes, most of which are also from Morphe. This one, I think, is from e.l.f. It is. Um, and we'll keep looking at makeup brushes some more. Um, brow brushes from Morphe. Lots of little liner brushes that are falling up in this little mess. Um, yeah, so that's my little brush collection. I also use this organizer for things that don't really fit in other places. My mascaras that I use the most. This is one of my favorite products. This is the Milk Makeup. Uh, it's, it's like a tinted moisturizer that has SPF in it and I've been using it a lot this summer. So that is part one. Moving my brush cartridge to the side, it usually lives right there. We are moving on. This is kind of like my accumulated assorted stuff. And you will see that my obsession with boxes runs deep. Is my little acrylic thing that I keep palettes in. And yes, my kitties do use the bathroom in the far corner. I'm sorry, but they just like it down here and it was happening whether the boxes were down here or not. This is the Take Me Back to Brazil palette. That is a great pigment palette. I have the Creepy Cute palette. I have some magnetic lashes. I love those. I'm sorry also guys that I don't wear fake nails. Um, it's, it's kind of the same as my lash thing except I just I don't like damaging my nails. I like to keep them really healthy. This is the pigment drawer. These are the Vice Art Editorial Brights. This is the Sauce Box palette that has some really nice shimmers in it. Uh, this, it's the Art Nouveau, I beg your pardon. It has Inferno, Fortuna, Jade, and Wealth. Basically, I think it is, it's like um, a yellow, a green, a purple, and a reddish, if I remember correctly. Now, moving on to the third row. Like I said, this is just stuff that doesn't fit in any of the other places you'll see. I have my Lime Prime highlighter. I have re recently 
like, I don't know. I've recently kind of come to not like Lime Crime after seeing some of their practices. This is still a great highlighter palette. I have my Too Faced highlighter, the first highlighter I ever bought, and this Hot Mama blush. I got it from Ipsy a couple of years, whoever knows, ago, and I decided to get it in full size. This is just a milk makeup bag that came it came with um, some kind of promotion they were doing and I liked it so it comes with a mini cush and like a little coin purse. I just haven't had a chance to file that. I do have this huge desk and in it are like a million makeup bags. We will get into that later. This needs to be filed there. So as we move along, we get to the Kat Von D collection that is not set up with the rest of the Kat Von D stuff. So this is my Alchemist palette, absolutely love it. I am wearing it right now. It really does transform colors. Um, it's just a beautiful palette. This is my current favorite ride or die, the Shade and Light Glimmer Eye Palette. This is the Esperanza, it's an oldie but goodie. It's a classic. The Spellbinder Eyeshadow Palette, it is damaged, it's secondhand. And my Mi Vita Loca Remix Palette. Over here hiding, I see my Shade and Light Eye Contour Palette, the Non Glimmer, and I'm actually gonna put these back because I'm really kind of OCD about those palettes, like they have to line up perfectly. Like, oh, like, I like that. See, see how that goes? And then back here hiding is the Subculture Palette. I love this palette. Um, she is just currently in transit and is trying to find a new home. This is my Kat Von D setting spray. This is a boxy charm box that I like. I don't know why I like boxes. I really don't know what to do with the products in here. This is, I have like a million of these, little mini studded kisses. So this honestly shouldn't be there. Um, but this in here uh, is probably gonna be stuff that I stuck like send in with the giveaway winners. I like to keep these two because I do a lot of Poshmark and you know, it's always nice to put something like that in when someone is buying from your closet. This is my Allure Kat Von D box and inside I keep my Sugar Pill eyelashes and uh, some of them I've used before. Uh, the majority of them are just there for, uh, they're, it's just a collection. I do collect Sugar Pill just like I collect Kat Von D. So, moving on, this is kind of the discarded section of my world. This is some tools that I use, some shades that don't work anymore, my Venus palettes. Um, this is just a collector's palette. It's the Andy Warhol. It's got Andy Warhol imprinted on it. Let me see if I can open it. Ugh, this is going to be difficult, but... Anyway, it is in there and it's just cool. It's got Andy Warhol on it, like I said, but there's my NARS Narcissus palette. I've been looking for that. Let me pull that out because it does not belong in there. Wow, I'm finding stuff. And I see in the bottom there just the three Venus palettes. So moving on. All right, so real quick, I just slid everything back to how it was supposed to be. As you can see, I have some issues with symmetry. Right here I have, um, this is a setting spray that I use with the Concrete Minerals, we'll get to that. This is a beauty blender which turned into the weirdest shape ever. I don't really know what to do with it. It basically looks like it has a big nose. This right here is my Smoke and Mirrors lipstick set. Ooh, I like that. Do you see how it turns kind of grayish purple? When I move it, I like that. But this is another Kat Von D. I just haven't been able to really fit her in anywhere. So now we're going to move across the desk and look at the real good stuff. This is my favorite section. This is where I keep things that I have to have at reach at all times. This is my magnetic palette. It's by Saucebox Cosmetics. It's a double decker. Basically, you get the entire H Day palette on the top, which I use quite frequently. And then on the bottom, I have my, this is an Ofra that I got, I'm not sure, through some subscription service, and this is the Kat Von D Shade and Light Refill in Subconscious. I have not yet um, invested in her entire palette, and because they were magnetic, I figured why not. This is something that I use to um, kind of just clean off my fingers, and I have a clean side. I have a bunch of these. They're kind of like a full size, or like a handheld version or not a handheld they're a bigger version of the little potting transfer things like this it's like the same material as the color switches so going into these these are also just little amazon collector things you can see my science kit over there i look that's my chemistry lab because i do chemistry in the same room that i do all my makeup so let's bring this guy over here so most of this here is eyeliners. I'm also showing a lot of my hands, and I am a little embarrassed to do that because they are not in the best shape, but 
you know, that's from things in my past. So I decided to turn the ring light off just because um, it was putting a weird glare. This is also something that I got recently. It's just a sample. This is the Coconut Skin Smoothie Primer by First Aid Beauty, and it actually is really nice, uh, especially in the summer because I do tend to get some sunburnt skin. These are two blender sponges, two of my favorites, that really need to be washed. That's why they're up there, because they're currently being used. This is the Japanesque, and this is the original Beauty Blender. Behind it, you see my MAC Fix Plus Glossier Skin Tint and Kat Von D uh, Locket Foundation in Cool 44. Now, this pales in comparison to like, I, I don't know, like Laura Lee's closet and stuff, but you know what? I'm happy with my collection. This is my concealer brush by Kat Von D, also still in the box. That's just how I roll. I have the Locket Foundation brush in its box right here. Uh, this is the Kat Von D brow brush. This is the Kat Von D shade and light brush. And I don't know if I like it in there or if I prefer it over here. Like you see my OCD issue happening? Because then this can take its spot right here. Well, no, it can't because anyway, I'll figure that out later. So going in, I have a ton of liners and they are separated. So this is the new lash liner. I really love it. Um, I have my tattoo liners. I have a couple minis and a couple of full sizes. This is the basket case liner that my husband got me from Sephora. I have this one, which is out of its box, but I also have two brand new in box that he got me. Um, this is another one of those little minis that I was showing. This is an Everlasting Liquid Lip in Wizards, a full size I am wearing right now. And this is the Underage Red Mini Studded Kiss. I have the Double Red set in, I believe this is Nosferatu and Exorcism. These are two of my favorite reds from Kat Von D. So let's keep on moving. This is my Everlasting Liquid Lip, I'm sorry, Everlasting Lip Liner, also new in box. I have not used this. Um, this is another lip liner that I don't honestly know where it come, came from. Don't know the brand. Oh, it's Makeup Forever. That's really cool. But it must have come with a subscription service. I'll definitely have to try that. Um, and like I said, these are just gel liners. And they range from Ulta. I have a couple of sugar ones. Um, let me see. A couple of, um, like, this is Jean de Bleu. And they're just, there's a couple of Urban Decay ones, just my favorites. I'm really picky when it comes to eyeliner. And as you can see, I have things separated, whether they are uh, gel, liquid, and then the liquid that they present in. I actually am seeing something that I do need to throw away. This is the Koki liner. I use this forever. It's in deepest black. It's really nice, but it's very old and it is going to have to go in the rubbish. So moving right along, there are a ton of eyeliners here. I just don't think that I can or should show them all. This is one of my Milk Makeup stamps. This is the star one that I use the most. I have a lot more makeup upstairs that I just haven't had a chance to schlep downstairs. This is my Sugar in Black also, which I think I should get rid of as well, but I know it's really old. Yeah, it's an eye product. I am gonna get rid of it. Goodbye. And so we move on. This is my Milk Makeup Blur Liquid right now. I love boxes, if you can't tell that already. And this has like a back compartment and this fits really nicely in it, but I just need to find how I like other things to go. So let's look at the drawers. In this drawer, I have some Kat Von D products. This is my Shade and Light Eye, the bronze one. This is my Tardis uh, Pro. It has never been used. It has its brand new brush with it, just because it was something that I really wanted to keep. And this is my Urban Decay 24-7 Glide On Eye ah, Eyeliner in black. And the reason that it's in here instead of down or instead of with here is because it's I'm keeping it more for sentimental value. It was the first Urban Decay eyeliner I was able to buy after getting out of prison. This is a sex kitten mini. I don't know why this is in here. Um, so we're learning together. This is just a drawer for my Addicted to Pretty Sugar Pill palette. This palette is truly remarkable. It is also a collector thing and it has four shades. It has a blinding bright 
white, a blue, a pink, and a green. Very cool. Down here we have my sugar pill singles. I have, uh, I think I have eight of them. I think I have the whole rainbow in there. I do. And then moving over again, that is that little thing. In fact, I'm probably gonna like totally reorganize this after this, but in here I have my concrete minerals. I only have three of them. These are the three colors I like the most, the pink, the red, and the forest green. I have three Morphe brushes that I keep with them. And like I said, I use this setting spray with them. I also have this by Essence. It is a color correcting prime, um, I'm sorry, concealer. And this is another color corrector. So not every, I, I don't only have like crazy fancy stuff. I, I don't have much crazy fancy stuff at all. Um, how was that closed before? Anyway, and what is in here? This is, oh yeah, this is my brow drawer, uh, ABH dip brow, super brown walnut, super brow in bleached, I want to say, and super brow in crimson. Is it crimson? I lost the box for this. So let's see, it is scarlet. I'm sorry, crimson is the warmer one. And this is the Glossier Boy Brow. All right, so we are moving on to the other side. We already went over the sauce box. This is my Fenty Sangria Sunset Kilowatt Foil. Is that what it's called, Sangria Sunset? Mimosa Sunrise and Sangria Sunset. Yes. This is my Jeffree Star Blood Sugar Palette. In here, I have little pots of things that seem to make sense in the same drawer for me for some reason. This is my KBR uh, Gloss. This is an Ofra Liquid Gel Liner. I don't know why it has scratched off. It's not really that old. This is my NARS creamy foundation, I'm sorry, creamy concealer that I use to cut my crease and stuff. And this is the Lolita Shadow. There is my Lemonade, which is now an antique, and the City Color Primer that I replaced it with. Moving on, I have all of my, um, not all of them, I thought there was one in that other thing, I guess not. This is the Locket Concealer Drawer. I have two whiteouts, one L7 warm and one L1 neutral, light one neutral, and that's kind of got a blue tint to it. This is my kind of like secret, like these are like the things that I, I'm very happy I have and I don't know how I have them. This is an older Lime Prime product and you know, despite my feelings about Lime Prime, this is a really cool product. It's tin, it's got a tin hinge, a little unicorn on it. By the way, I don't like unicorns. The reason I called myself a vintage unicorn is because, I mean, I've been unique since, you know, I was through with it before you knew what to do with it kind of thing. That's why I picked it. And this is my pastel goth palette, still my favorite palette of all time. Moving on, this drawer is kind of everywhere. It's kind of all over the place and that's what it is. This is my NYX Fard Ombre. It's an Ombre Flame Point Insta Flame brush. Blush, blush. This is a city color blush. I do like city color. They are a cool brand. This is a Milk Makeup Mini Blur Stick. I, there's my sharpener, because I had another sharpener somewhere because I couldn't find this one. My Fenty Match Stick in Amber. This is my flesh thingy. I will say, I was a little surprised at how small this is, this was, just based on what it looked like on the Ulta website. This is a number one prop for $18. I thought it was going to, I mean, the way that they photographed it, you know, I was thinking that it would be similar to that size, but it is very much not. But look how the camera can be deceiving. But $18, not really a bad thing, considering I am still barely scratching the surface on this, and I use it pretty frequently. So let's close that back up. Oh, and the Divine Palette. This is a really nice palette. Great metallics. So we are almost done. I feel, oh no, we're not. My train case. We're not going to look in my train case. Um, so here I have one of the Lime Crime Diamond Dew Crusher things. There is another one in here. This is basically lipsticks and things that are otherwise classified as similar to lipstick. Um, a couple of Jeffree Stars. I believe this is Coral Fixation. No, it's Posh. I'm sorry. There is Coral Fixation with the third, with the uh, summer packaging. Yet another studded kiss in Double Dare. Where are they coming from? This is a Lime Prime Liquid Lip Velveteen in, um, sorry about that abrupt stop. I was just informed that I was running out of storage space, so like in a frenzy, I deleted all my favorites. I don't, I think it's because I'm recording in 4K, which 
which I probably should, don't need to be for this video. So this is a Jeffree Star, this is Nude Beach. I don't really love this color on me, it's a little funny. This is a really cute, just like little pink lipstick um, by Mellow, I like it. It's a nice little soft lipstick. And also my Anastasia Beverly Hills Gloss in Toffee. Most of the things I have that aren't my favorite brands, um, I do have in sample sizes. And sample sizes are great because they actually last a really long time. So right now what I'm doing is I'm kind of putting everything back and realizing that some things should be with other things and that some things didn't go back where they belong. So that's about it. I will admit that I do have, this desk has lots and lots of drawers and what is in those drawers? This is the makeup bag drawer as well as a toner that I like to keep on hand and a couple of other like little storagey kind of things. Then I have my train case, which I do not want anyone to see the inside of because you will realize how deep my addiction goes. I am actually putting this on the internet. This is my train case. It is not really that organized. It is just a bunch of stuff that I have never ever used. Yep, just take a good old look in there. Actually, I, I have used this. This is the color pop that I reviewed. I don't know why this is in here. Certain things are a little out of order. This is a Makeup Forever palette I have never touched. The uh, Graveyard Girl by Tarte thing. Um, and just, this is a very nice thing. I lost the box for it, which is devastating. Only to me. Other eyeliners that are in like kind of premier brands, I guess you'd say. Um, and just other stuff that I just either have never used or, yeah, really have never used. These are MDM Flow right here. I got, I accidentally like, I don't know why I ended up with a bunch of them, but they are very nice. So it's been about 15 minutes since I showed the DC box with dead palettes. I feel so bad for that, I really do. Um, believe me, I do posh the ones that, you know, are still in decent condition. Just some of them, I, I don't know. Use makeup as a weird thing. But now for what everyone really wants to see, the boxes. These, I, I'm not only obsessed with, oh, this is like a problem. I have a room upstairs that has nothing but the packages that these things arrived in. Sugar pill boxes, Jeffree Star boxes, you saw the Lime Crime box, Kat Von D box, I like boxes, okay? I don't do anything with them, but I like to have them. And on occasion, I will send things, like I keep them under this like facade that I'm gonna send posh stuff out in them, but then I'm like, mm, it'll fit in this Amazon box as easily as it would in that Lime Crime box. I actually did end up sending something out in a Strobe Cosmetics box today so that's fun but this video has gotten really really long i'm sorry about that but it was kind of fun and i'm getting just a little bit shiny here from all of the movement so let's open these and see what we have this is the summer collection that i am giving away on wednesday this is the thirsty palette i don't really want to open i don't know if i should open it just because that's someone's, like, that's someone's joy, I feel like. This is gonna actually go to someone. But the Thirsty Palette is in there nice and safe. The other Thirsty Palette that I got on the day these dropped, uh, the one that I used and abused to death, I did end up getting, uh, I ended up, um, I was gonna say getting rid of, but I wanna say rehoming. I ended up rehoming it on Poshmark and I hope that the person who bought it is enjoying it. And I said that it had been pretty heavily uh, used because of just the, the two reviews I did. And then I have this gigantic box, which includes the blood sugar palette and the liquid lipstick set, the equality one. I kinda wish I'd gotten one of those for myself, but I am leaning more to the Kat Von D. Um, I don't know, they're so similar. They have such a similar fan base, but look at all of this lovely Jeffree Star packaging with the big phallic star, I gotta love that. So there is the blood sugar palette and the Equality Liquid Lipstick palette. And whoever wins these, I do save the cards. This is the blood sugar card that will go with the blood sugar palette to the winner. Uh, I have the Thirsty card, I actually have two of those. So that will go with the Liquid Lipstick set and the palette. Because I like those, I keep those, I keep stickers and stuff from brands, so I 
figured you guys will too. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please remember to like, subscribe, comment, follow me on Instagram, and I will be announcing the winners, oh my gosh, on Wednesday. I'm sorry that I drew this contest out a little bit, but I really wanted to allow as many people as I could the chance to get in on it. And I wanna just shout out a couple of my subscribers. Um, Naturally Zoe, who won the Kat Von D, um, giveaway that I did. Always thank you so much for your support. Danielle Glamberger, Miss Glamberger, you are just so supportive and I love engaging with you in the comment section. Miss Trouble Girl, Trouble Harris, you know who you, mm-hmm. And to all of my newfound supporters on Instagram, I will keep bringing it. I love it. Um, I do want to just address the fact that I, I get a lot of, um, I'm gonna cry I get a lot of feedback like oh my gosh you're so gorgeous stuff like that and that means a lot to me because I I don't believe that I don't see that I I mean I put on the makeup and the fake hair and all that but you know you never know what's going on in the heart of someone that you're watching on the internet that you're talking to on the internet that you're seeing on the internet and um I think that uh, self-image issues are a huge part of just the experience of being, you know, in my age group, in your age group, in any age group, just it's part of the existential dilemma is how we see other people. I think that it comes a lot from, you know, when I'm scrolling through Instagram or I'm looking at a magazine and I say, oh my gosh, she's so pretty or oh my gosh, she's not. I automatically assume everyone's looking at me the same way when honestly, I'm walking down the street, probably not a lot of people look or even judge. Then again, I do have crazy hair and I'm always wearing crazy makeup. So maybe people do look. I have gotten a whole lot of, you know, it's not Halloween yet. And um, anyway, I just want to say that your support is so appreciated. Um, and I'm sorry that I didn't upload for that week. Uh, it's it's a roller coaster, you know, balancing my real, li my real life with my life in front of this camera. Um, because I feel like I can say things in front of this camera that I can't necessarily say to people in my life. And that's a beautiful thing. So thank you so much for watching this, uh, saga, if you will. I just wanted to give you a look at what's going on behind this camera. Actually, it is literally behind the camera. The way I have it, it goes the makeup, the camera, the me, the background. So, you know, it's definitely nothing like, you know, those beautiful Ikea shelves that are all like categorized and everything, but... I'm happy with what I've accumulated and I don't think that material possessions should be counted as anything, but if nothing else, all this shows me is that I was able to come up from nothing. So thank you guys so much and I will see you in the next video. Mwah.